Uh, hi, this is Colin Clark at Interbreaking Defense. This is the first day of the Paris Air Show, and we're here with Evan Hunt, who is head of business development for the High Energy Laser Counter UAS system. Thank you very much, Colin. This is the High Energy Laser Weapon System for Counter UAS Operations. It is a compact and modular and scalable design that is currently packaged on the back of a very popular uh, light tactical vehicle, the Polaris M Razor. It's a 10 kilowatt class laser weapon system which fires a instantaneous, invisible, and precise beam of light to actually burn holes in targets at range. And this simulator we're sitting in front of actually mimics the interface, the real user interface that our, our operators use to engage drones in the field. But you have actually shot things down with this. We have. We've shot down over 90 drones, uh, multiple types, fixed wing and quadcopter drones, at multiple exercises for both the Air Force and the Army. And nothing larger than like a quadcopter, I assume. Slightly larger. So this system's really optimized for class one and class two drones. Um, so there are some fixed wings, but they're still relatively small. Class three drones, uh, you'd need a higher power laser. That's right. 50 or more. Well, um, it all depends on the environment and the specific okay. threat and what the threat's made of. So um, I wouldn't say you absolutely need 50. You would have some effectivity even with this system, but it all depends what you're trying to do. So at this point, are we looking at this mainly for uh, force protection or is this also a SOCOM toy? So all the above. Um, a system like this is really being looked at for, for example, for, by the Air Force for air base air defense, parking this system at the end of a runway and defending, defending a forward operating base runway uh, from small drones, class ones and class twos, which tend to be the biggest problem at the moment mm. and also um, the cheapest and easiest to employ. Yeah, General Dunford's just been talking about the Iranians probing bases in the Middle East. Exactly. Uh, but, th but the reality is SOCOM and the Army are both looking at similar applications for slightly different mission sets, right? The Army's concerned with uh, maneuver shore ad, and so they want to they wanna actually uh, have some more capability on larger vehicles in a mobile configuration. SOCOM does everything. Right. So, uh, Let's shoot something down. Okay. So this is a uh, single operator system. If you are a young troop... It's very easy to learn because it's on the same sort of gaming controller you've Unlike grown up me. with. Well, you learned quickly too, Colin, when we went through it. Um, but really, you're just going to tap an A button, and what that's going to do is slew your camera, your multi-spectral targeting system, which is at the top of this razor, uh, over to one of these many radar targets. So in the red, that's the radar saying, hey, this is a potential threat. You're going to hit one button, and it's going to move you around. So I just picked up another target there, and then I can zoom in with a click of a button, and I can positively identify my drone. Now I'm gonna to transition to optical track. So the radar's moving me along with a click of a button. Now I'm optically tracking via contrast with this really fantastic sensor. And then with one more click of a button, you hold to engage. An invisible, instantaneous beam of light burns a hole in the target and knocks it out of the sky in just a few seconds. Presuming it's not raining really heavily or it's really foggy. Correct. Yeah, the system will be degra degraded in uh, poor weather, and that is why you know, part of the message at this booth is you need a layered defense. You need jamming capability like you see from the wind shear system. You might need kinetic capability for certain mission sets like you see with the uh, Block 2 Coyote hanging mm -hmm. from the ceiling there. Uh, and you can, when you get good, which I'm not that good compared to some of our operators, you can move very quickly and engage one drone after another drone after another drone. And how many of these systems have actually been purchased? Actually been purchased? Yes. Zero, although that may change. And do you have uh, expressions of interest from, I assume, SOCOM, Air Force, Army? We have expressions, very serious expressions of interest from uh, many, many customers, not just within the DOD, but also uh, around the world from our coalition partners. Uh, should we expect an announcement soon-ish? I think there is a likelihood that we will be able to, be able to announce something soon. Yes. You can tell us now. <laughs> I wish I could. All wish right. I could. Um, probably the last interesting thing is a lot of people say, oh, lasers are a weapon, and they are, and therefore they'll never be, never be employed to protect civilian infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? Maybe airports. And it's definitely true. But something to understand about this system, which the simulator demonstrates, is you can actually enable firing zones, which very specifically... 
uh, tell you when you can fire and when you cannot. So if you see this area in the sky, all the targets in the green, the system will allow me to fire. If I tried to move to a target which is too high and not, not in that green, the system will automatically stop me from firing. I'm holding the trigger and it won't fire. Okay. So you, you basically built in rules of engagement. Absolutely. And this is all about your tolerance for risk as an air defender or as protecting, right? If you zoom in on the, on the drone and you see the drone maybe carrying ammunition and it's got a very aggressive uh, tendency, maybe you'll use the wind, she wind shear to try to jam it first and, and then you can you know, scale the threat and respond accordingly with a laser. And you can do things like wait for the drone to pass out of, out of the way of a building, right? If you don't want to engage with windows behind where there could be civilian populations. So, so let's, uh, we don't expect to see something like this deployed at, say, Kennedy Airport in the next couple of years. I think it would take a watershed event to potentially change that type of thinking, just like September 11th did, right, when, right. with uh, x-ray machines going to the airport. Things can happen, but hopefully not. All right. Thank you very much. Thank this you very much. Colin Clark on the first day of the Paris Air Show.